Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be messing around with this awesome Lenovo X3650 model 2 which is a very price um, it's cheap and they're used they're close to 10 years old now and they're very cheap affordable I guess they, it's called like you can go and buy one of these on eBay for less than $200 I see some ridiculously low numbers sometimes people tell me that they got this for 35 bucks or something like that and it's a really really good price often you get a server like this and it's not very well specced but you can actually upgrade it for for a very small amount of money to something that can kick ass and today we're gonna we're gonna go into that a little bit because uh, some times ago I got some CPUs um, home from the United States bought on Amazon thank you very much to the youtuber Unky Joe's Playhouse for getting these to me um, and I have two different sets of CPUs the X3650 model 2 should only be able to handle a like the CPU should not produce more than 95 watts of heat power so the idea is that the server can use the CPUs up to a TDP of 95. So there is a range of CPUs that is under 95 watts and they should be all okay. But, um, but would it do more than that? I got the top CPU home for it and that one is the 5690 and that one has a TDP of 130 watts. So I think we should just try that, see what happens. Um, it might fail, it might complain that Ooh, this is way too much, you should not do that. Kinda, as long as it's just complaining, it's not a big deal, is it? As long as it works. But otherwise, I have the, the fastest CPU with a TDP of 95 watts as well. That one is the Intel Xeon 5675, which is a 6 core. 3.06 gigahertz um, we'll see that I can't remember so uh, let's see what we have in the server now so here we have Cinebench and I have just run this so the orange line here is is the latest result and we see that it scores 1278 I did a similar test in another video not long ago but in here we have an Intel Xeon CPU and it's the X5650 and this is a 6 core, there are two of those, so combined that's 12 cores, 24 threads and they are running at 2.67 GHz, awesome. And it sees this as a server 2012, it is a server 2016, but never mind. Um, so that's what we are up against. And down here, I have the CPUs that we're gonna be testing. This one is the 5675. And over here in plastic, um, I have the very shy. And this one is the 5690. Yeah, you can see that. And I have two of each. So we're gonna be able to test that very nicely. So let's shut down the server and try and put in these two 5690s and see if that will work. I am expecting that to fail or be problematic and then we're gonna switch over and put in these 5675s. So here we have the server open. The Lenovo X3650 Model 2 had a little bit of maintenance here because this server has some extra PCI ports in here that I don't think is well, they are not necessary here. So we're gonna take some of those out because they are using power in the server for no reason at all. This one has some extra network cards. Um, these are just, I think they're Intel. Yeah, they're Intel network cards. Uh, two ports of one gigabit. So we're gonna get rid of those. Um, no reason to have them there. And in the other riser card over here, we have a couple of 
fiber optic HBAs. So we're gonna get rid of those as well. These are four gigabits um, fiber optic HBAs. And as the server is powered up, all of these cards are also powered up and they are consuming power. And there is no reason for that. So um, pulling those out of the way. Then to get to the CPUs, we need to remove some of this air buffler thing. Oh, there's a lot of RAM in this one. And we have a CPU here, CPU 1 and CPU 2. So let's release CPU number 1 over here. Take out this cooler. It hasn't been here long. I put this in a few weeks ago. Um, uh, maybe a little bit more than a few weeks, but not that much longer than a few weeks. So let's clean that and prepare to put in some new CPUs. And the other one. The sockets down here are very fragile, so as the longer I can have the CPU there, the longer it's safe. So here we have the two new CPUs. Uh, these are used, uh, refurbished CPUs bought on Amazon in the US. Um, oh, oh, that was a bad idea. And they should go in pretty much the same way as the other, as the old CPU. So if I line that up and make sure that they are in the same orientation and making sure they're pointing the same way, uh, should be all good. So that one is gonna go in that way. So we're just gonna pick up this one and put in that one. See all those pins? Bend one, bad day. There, and close that down again. Same thing over here, release. And then we put on some heatsink compound. Uh, this is my favorite cheap, cheap, cheap Chinese brand. Doesn't cost much. Same thing on the other CPU. Off camera, I have cleaned the heat sinks again, so we're gonna be putting those down. There. Guess it's okay. There. So I'll put everything back together and we'll see what happens. Okay, I have added power to it and it has power on. It's blinking, so it's ready to be turned on. The IMM in here has not done booting, so it's gonna be very noisy when I turn it on. As long as the management adapter in there hasn't um, checked out everything, like what's the temperature, how is the sensors, how is this and that, and well, it, it kind of, to be sure, it blows the fans a lot harder than it really needs to. So um, yeah, that's what it's doing right now. So um, let's see the screen over here, if anything pops up. Nothing yet. Usually there is something on the screen by now, I think. I'll go check in and see if I've got the display cable in there right. Yeah, that should be fine. So, no errors whatsoever over here. Nothing on the screen over here. I just went in and checked the IMM, the management adapter of this, and the IMM can start up. It doesn't show any error whatsoever. It says that the server is on doing great um, can't get a screen on it it's really weird um, but I'm gonna 
assume that the CPUs are just out of spec and it's not going to be able to run with them and we're just going to try and put in the 25675s and see if that isn't the issue i could of course have gotten two broken cpus that is an option okay so that didn't work at all so we are replacing the cpus and now we're going to be putting in these 5675s and these has a tdp of 95 watts and this has to also be put in the right way otherwise uh, we will um, also have a bad day and the other one just checking if everything looks normal beneath it and that one has to go in this way Everything is back in place. Let's pop the lid on. There, I just powered the server. Let's hear it roar. Yeah. Oh, and we immediately have something on the screen. So, um, yeah. Let's see how this does. Okay, it boots up very well. Let's see if we can get some better angle on that. Is that better? Might be. Um, it sees all 12 cores uh, really good. Yeah, there are 24 threads here. And it sees the CPU up here all right. X5675. And this is a 3.07 gigahertz processor. Even though it can turbo boost apparently up to 3.2 gigahertz. Right now it's not running as fast. It's not doing anything, so it's down to 1.6 gigahertz. Awesome. I already ran the first benchmark back here. Performance test 8.0. And the overall performance of these CPUs came out to be 10,525. I have a spreadsheet from last time, which is not a spreadsheet, but just a notepad document. And we can see that that's better. So let's put that in here. That's an x5675 there and that's 10,500 and what did I say 25 25 so yeah that's a thousand points better than the x5650 so better there let's close that oh let's save this it's a very neat to have that around I just forgot to delete it actually so save that uh, minimize and we're gonna close that one down and I thought that we should run cine bins together here just um, see how that does it shouldn't take too long so that's kind of the general idea so let's run that and we have the old results over here Fourteen hundred and eleven awesome okay so we saw what happened if we put in a CPU in the otherwise awesome Lenovo x3650 model 2 it um, looks like it's running but it doesn't show anything on the screen and it does not complain in the IMM it just doesn't boot ish and that's a bit weird it really should pop up and tell you that the CPU is outside of specs or something but Probably it can because it's not able to power that CPU, but the 5675 works really well in here. I just did a bit of math over here, and the benchmark, the first benchmark, pass mark, compared to the CPU that this server was born with, which was two E5530s, which is not 30s, yeah, 30s, which were four cores, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Well, in, in Passmark, it does 144% better. So if the E5530s uh, are at 100%, 
Well, the X56 75s are at 144%, so it's kind of, you get 44% extra there. In Sydney bins, the difference is bigger. With the E5530, we saw 727. With the X5675, we just got 1411. That's a 94% improvement. So it's almost double up on um, Cinebench. In an upcoming video, we're gonna be trying those two 5690s in a Model 3 down here. That one should be able to run those. And we will see if, if it's a bad CPU. I doubt it. I think that the M2 is just not able to handle that CPU. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I do hope you enjoy this. Now you don't have to do this. You can go right out and order the 5675 instead of having to spend money uh, on a 5690 in the hopes of it working. It's probably not. Best estimate is that you will end up with the same result as me. So go with the 5675 and you should be all good. So. Um, do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.